Welcome back, Shalligators. Well, Britney Spears is free. Free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, she's free at last. That was about Britney, right? No, I'm sure it was. No need to look it up. So Britney Spears is free. Her conservatorship is done. <laughs> okay. But she's not done being super pissed off about all the people who didn't support her, which, I mean, if she's going around, I think it's going to be the majority of planet Earth. But, I mean, she's got nothing but time, so maybe she could drag every human being individually. Whatever. But she's starting with Christina Aguilera, her Mickey Mouse Club co-star when they were about nine. So, okay. We're going to talk about what's going on here. I'm going to reiterate my thoughts on Britney. And most importantly, we're going to talk about what to do when you don't have friends who are supporting you. How do you deal with an unsupportive friend who is not there for you in your time of crisis? Is it something that like you can change? Is it something you can ameliorate? Or is it the writing on the wall where you need to fucking drop their ass? But before we get started, yes, tis the holidays, tis the time to buy yourself something fantastic like some new merch from SLXO, my clothing line. We just dropped Evil is More Fun. We've got crops, hoodies, and tote bags, and our other style, Rich and Sad, which I love. It's my personal favorite. I mean, I love them both, because Evil is fun, but I am rich and sad. So also, if you spend over $100, you get a free custom thank you video from yours truly. And speaking of custom videos, a great gift for a best friend, a pep talk for yourself, a Christmas wish, anything like that is a Cameo from me. Head on over to Cameo. Uh, you can also opt for just 24 hour delivery. That's a pretty easy, fun little way if you need a last minute gift. And my Cameos are really long. I talked for like five minutes. Like Cameo tells you like, take 30 seconds and complete your Cameo. I'm like 30 seconds? These people are spending their money. I'm not giving them 30 ratty seconds. Like, hi, hey, it's Shallon. Okay, bye. No. No. And also, if you want to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, head to my website, shallonlesser.com. You can get an Instagram review. I'm thinking about adding like Tinder reviews. We need them, right? I mean, we need them. Or you can offer 24-hour delivery. If you also need help ASAP, you know I got you, girl. And be sure to follow me on Instagram and TikTok at shallonxo. I'm always asking for y'all's opinion on videos and to weigh in. But I didn't ask you your opinion on this one. Why? Topic wrote itself. What to do with an unsupportive friend? Okay. So this is what happened. Christina Aguilera was at the Latin Grammys um, with some an odd bang situation. And a reporter asked if she had had any communication with Britney in light of her emancipation from the conservatorship. And so Christina's rep was like, no, I'm sorry. We're not doing that tonight. Thank you, though. Bye. And Christina seemed like, like she was like visibly like going back and forth. And she just said, I, I can't. But I'm happy for her. So, okay. Christina has, in fact, talked about Britney's conservatorship. I think in June she tweeted about it. She said, she tweeted a picture of her and Britney. She said, I've been thinking about her. It's unacceptable that any woman or human wanting to be in control of their own destiny might not be allowed to live life as they wish. She said that in June, right? Apparently, Britney didn't know this, or my guess is she didn't count that as enough effort from a girl she knew when she was nine. Do you know, do you know? One time, seven years ago, I was in the orthodontist waiting room and this lady, Patricia and I, were talking about how bad the magazine selections are. Where the fuck was Patricia when I was getting audited from H&R Block last year? I mean, where was Patricia during my struggles? Fakes. Christina is to Brittany what Patricia is to me. Non-existent. There's a difference between knowing someone for 20 years and knowing someone 20 years ago. I understand that for Brittany, time has kind of stood still. I mean, I'm not being sarcastic. Well, I sort of am. I'm not being sarcastic in that, like, her life has been very monotonous since she's been in this conservatorship. She hasn't done anything. She hasn't produced anything. She's been in a, a bird in a gilded cage. But like, Britney is also very much stuck in that realm of her life. I mean, look at what the fuck she wears. I know I talk about this every time I talk about her, but it's such a clear indication. Like her makeup is from the year 2000. Her clothes, these shorts, where do you even buy these shorts? JC Penny in a time machine, where? Like she is very much stuck back there. So in her mind, her Christina, 
Jessica Simpson, they're still like the triumvirate of pop stars, you know? And so I think for her, it's like, well, Christina's my friend. Like, yeah, she's sort of my like professional rival, but we're all in this together. And why isn't she sticking up to me? She ain't need to, Brittany. She doesn't need to. You guys don't know each other, but she did stick up for you. And even this question the reporter asked her, she answered. I can't, I'm happy for her. What does she want? The entitlement that Brittany is displaying, to me, is extremely worrisome. She's a real Nelson Mandela, isn't she? Locked in a $13 million mansion with her smoke show of a boyfriend and maids and chefs. And listen, I'm not saying Brittany has had a fair deal the last 13 years, but this Nelson Mandelification of herself is... The entitlement she's displaying here is exactly what is going to lead her to being dead or broke or in jail or have yet another baby removed from her custody. She doesn't have custody of her kids. You know that? That's, that's saying something right there. That's going to lead her down the exact same place in three to five years. You mark my words. And all the Britney stands come out of the woodwork because y'all have nothing better to do with your life. At least when I talk about celebrities, I make money. Like, I don't know what you guys get out of this. Like, I get paid to do this. I'm at work right now. This is my job. This is like a weird hobby you have when, you know, I don't know, when you're not dismantling the above ground pool. Okay? Why are we talking about this? Because yeah, the entitlement. Brittany seems very, very much laboring under the delusion that everyone needs to stand up for her. Everyone needs to come to her defense and talk about it and help her. And when we're in times of trouble, right? We think that. Doesn't the whole world know that I'm in pain? Why is the earth still turning? I have a problem. I'm in pain. You know who thinks like that? Teenagers. And this isn't a slam on teenagers. This is normal and natural for teenagers. Your brains haven't started, haven't finished. <laughs> they started forming. They just haven't finished forming yet, right? You are getting a higher... <sighs> dopamine and oxytocin hit from social connections, right? Which makes peer pressure truly so much more um, powerful when you're a teenager. You know, you grow up and it's like, I don't give a fuck if you want me to vape. I don't want to vape. When you're a teenager, you need those social connections. They're paramount. So you are much more uh, susceptible to peer pressure. I say this because when you are susceptible to peer pressure, you are essentially a kite in a windy sky. Right? Isn't that kind of how we feel? And again, the, I'm not talking trash about teens. You know, I'm like the teen queen. I love my teen girls. Like when I was a teenager, I've never worked harder in my life. You know, I'd go to school all day and then come home and do hours of homework, play sports, be class president. It was just, it's so much pressure and no freedom. And doesn't that kind of seem how Brittany probably feels? Pressure, but no freedom. And we know that fame sticks you it freezes you at the age at which it happens. Why? Because fame is a type of trauma and trauma does exactly that. You look at Justin Bieber. He's like a 15 year old, right? He has like, his decoration in his house is like skateboards. <laughs> Weird. Brittany is the clearest example of this. She is cemented at that age where everyone needs to pay attention to me. I'm having a bad day. But leave me alone, but pay attention to me and only say good things. Like that is how... If you're still a teenager, trust me, you're going to look back and be like, that's probably true. And we all do it to varying degrees of severity. You know, we have our little outbursts. It's okay. It's part of the growing process. But it is not part of the growing process for Brittany. It is where she is unfortunately stuck. And so the way she views people is, what are you going to do for me? Again, that's, that's many times how an adolescent can feel. It's like my parents exist to serve me. They're not their own people I mean I guess they kind of are but like not really you know my friends also sort of exist to serve me from those social relationship dynamics I say this because just because Britney Spears says something doesn't make it true just because I say something doesn't make it true but I gotta say I'm probably a little closer to true than Britney you know I've got okay so for her to say Refusing to speak when you know the truth is the equivalent to a lie. That is true. I mean, it's the old saying, like, all evil needs to flourish is for good men to do nothing. You know, it's why I bitch about mandates and stuff like that. Why is it such a hard topic for people to talk about? Brittany, 
it's not a hard topic. It's that people don't care. They don't care. It's a very easy topic to talk about a pop star. It's pretty easy, you know? They're not talking about it because either they don't disagree with the situation or they don't care. I say this because once we can accept that other people only sort of care about us, our life opens up. What is it my grandmother used to say? Or maybe it was NeNe Leakes. I don't know. They're both so wise. We wouldn't care so much what people thought about us if we knew how seldom they did. I, oh, <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Isn't there a freedom that comes with that? Hey, you know what? I would love to think that all you guys, even the people who hate me, just sit around like, Shallon! Or like, Shallon! Probably not, you know? We, we don't care about other people. We're too busy thinking about ourselves. We know this. Like, when you just hear that, you're like, okay, yeah, you're right. We get that. And as you become an adult, you don't need a YouTuber to tell it to you. It becomes, you get that from various different points in your life, you know? And there you embrace that freedom and you're like, you know what, fuck it. If people don't like me, I don't care. Fuck it, if people won't help me, I'm gonna save myself. I'm not a victim, I'm a champion. And I understand Britney's situation is different. She didn't have the means to save herself. I get that, okay? That's, we're moving away from the whole Britney thing, right? We're talking about us and we're talking about our real lives. But Britney has not gotten this memo. She genuinely thinks everyone should be talking about her and talking about her plight. What the fuck does Britney do for anyone else? What's she doing besides a million twirls in her labia shorts with three day old makeup and her disintegrating teeth? I'm not like face shaming her. I'm talking about her teeth because that is not actually how teeth are supposed to age. We're kind of around the same age, I think. I think. My teeth don't look like that. You know what does make your teeth look like that? Drugs. Any normal person who is not on drugs and who does have access to dental care, which she does, she's rich, should not have teeth like that. So again, like, I'm sorry, but this person, she's not a stable person. And what she says is not gospel. And she's just, she's a fucking train wreck. And it hasn't even started. The train hasn't even left the station yet. And you guys are going to drag me for this. And then in a year and a half, you're going to be like, Shallon called it because I do. I... Okay, and I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong, but I know I'm, I know I'm not. So was was Brittany wrong to expect all this support from Christina? And more importantly, because who fucking cares? How much support can we expect? Now you're probably thinking, no, Shallon. <laughs> the title of this video is what to do with unsupportive friends. So they're already not supportive. It's not what I asked. What we truly need to analyze is how much support should we reasonably expect. I'm a very loyal person. My friends truly come before anything. I realize that because I will ditch work. I will like ditch a boy to see my friends. Like they're my everything. I'm an only child. My friends are my family. And so I give a lot. And the number one thing I give to my friends is loyalty. You hate that bitch. I hate that bitch. Let's ride. He fucked you over. I'll post him on my Instagram. What's that? Right? This is what I give. I'm a sword and a shield. So I require a lot of loyalty back, a lot. And more than just loyalty, you know, because loyalty is like a, it's almost like a warlike term. I require a lot of support. When I'm in pain, the world stops, they need to listen. And we've talked about that, that dynamic in terms of happy relationships. Studies have shown that that is truly the foundation of a happy romantic relationship. I'm in pain, the world stops, he listens. Because if you don't have that, you really don't have anything. You can have all the chemistry in the world. You have a bad day, he doesn't give a shit. That chemistry is going to evaporate really fast, right? Same with a friendship. You can call yourself my best friend. I bought you all this for your birthday, but like I'm going through a really bad time. You're not there for me. Okay. Okay. Let's go back to what we were saying earlier. We wouldn't care if we knew how seldom people thought about us. Let's loop that in here. Because what we need to do is manage expectations. Now look. This isn't dialing down your needs. This isn't shaming yourself for what you need in a time of crisis. It is looking at the reality of deliverables. What can I expect from this person? Is it above or below what they're actually capable of? 
More importantly, is it above or below what I give them? I found that when I expect the most from other people, and not just when I expect the most, but when I am the most hurt about not getting what I feel like I have deserved, when I'm seething and resentful, is in a relationship of any kind, a friendship, a romantic, where I have given too much. Not I have given more than they've given. I don't mean that. When I have given too much, when I have eroded myself, when I've spent too much money to go on this bachelorette trip, when I couldn't really afford it, and now I'm here and I'm pissed off. And when I became official with my boyfriend, Kelsey actually didn't give a fuck, right? It's when we feel like we're in a debt, we're in a deficit, we're bankrupt, we're in the red, that we are not ever going to get our needs met because we're mad at ourselves. Your emotions, it's like a bank account, right? Your emotions, your mind, your heart, just yourself is a bank account. Let's think of it like that. When it's overdrawn, you know it. The bank is never like, I don't know. You only had $10 in there, but you bought them as $500. I don't know. Is that overdrawn? I don't know. It knows. And it knows immediately. Your soul is the same way. When you go into an overdraft situation emotionally, you know it. You might not present it outwardly. I had, oh my God, a weekend in Miami. <laughs> ah. <laughs> but there's something happening inside your body, a pit in your stomach. Your back starts to hurt. I carry all my stress in my back, right? You're not sleeping well. You have that sick, anxious feeling. This is your body and your psyche telling you, we're overdraft. We're overdrawn right now. This is not working. It's 11 p.m. Your friend is calling you. You know she's had her 10 trillionth fucking fight with her boyfriend. And no matter what you say, it's never going to change. You have an early meeting tomorrow. Should you answer or not? Hey, Kristen. You're in an overdraft. And when we do that, there is no amount that we could take from the other person to make up for it. Why? Because the other person didn't hurt us. We hurt ourselves by going against what was authentic, by going on that trip we couldn't afford and defaulting on our student loan payment, by answering that call and fucking our meeting the next day. We know what we should be doing. We honestly do. Nine times out of 10, I talk to you guys, I talk to you guys all day. Nine times out of 10, we know exactly what we should be doing. But we let ourselves get pressured into things, right? Goes back to that peer pressure. The older we get, the better we get at saying no, just because we've had more practice. But also we don't have that parasympathetic response in our brain that is informing these decisions. But brain or no brain, history or no history, we need to be aware of these responses. Why are we talking about this, right? Because it informs when we feel like people aren't supportive. And not always, not always. But if you're in a situation with someone where it's like, she is just being a bad friend. Do you feel that way because you feel like you have been not just a good friend, but an overdraft friend to her? Have you gone above and beyond at your own detriment, at your own expense, knowing that this is not a good idea, knowing that this is maybe a pattern? She always calls me at 11. She always is asking me to do things when she knows I don't make that much money, right? And we are the ones being our own co-conspirators. We're breaking our own hearts. So only so much blame and burden can be put on this other person for taking. No one can take what you won't give. Yeah, they're asking. You don't have any boundaries. You're not saying no in an effective way. You're not enforcing those boundaries and deploying consequences. Whose fault is this? Oh, Shallon. <laughs> watch this video feel better not to feel worse about myself baby girl it's not about feeling better or worse it's about acknowledging things that need to be changed and just simply doing that okay you can't change what you don't acknowledge you can you can come to this video and be like but i'm the victim you know how i love a victim they're my favorite or you can say all right maybe I have been giving too much to this and maybe maybe the change i wish to see does really have to start with me but let's say that's not the case. Let's say you haven't gone into too much of a deficit because when, when we're not getting reciprocation from someone, anything we've done feels like a deficit. We bring a $3 bottle of wine to someone's house. They show up empty handed. You're like, well, 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 Kim, 
right? It doesn't have to be catastrophic of a give on your end for them to simply not respect it. What do you do? One of the greatest tips I think I've ever given you guys is about cake, birthday cake. I highly encourage you to buy your own birthday cake. Now, birthdays are so fraught with expectations and who's texting me and who's not and this game, blah, 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 right? And for me, I've localized my expectations about birthdays onto the cake. It doesn't matter what kind of cake my friends would bring me. I mean, they'd go to Milk Bar, to Momofuku. They would get this, they would, like expensive ass confections. My mom would make a whole tray of tiramisu and it didn't matter. I was like, thank you, thank you. You did, that's so thoughtful. I hated it. Why? Because there was only one kind of cake I actually ever wanted. White cake with pink frosting. That's it. To me, that's a fucking birthday cake. I don't want your goddamn banana cream pie. It's not, no, that's not it. And I realized no one was ever bringing me that because I never asked for it. Oh, you're gonna bring me cake, thank you. I expected people to just be mind readers. Well, of course they're gonna know that's what birthday cake is. That's, they're gonna know I guess, right? And sometimes I would tell people, I would tell my mom, cause you can be honest with your mom. It's like, this is what I want. And she wouldn't do it. It would be a coconut cake. It would be a peanut butter cake. I love both of those things. They're not what I wanted. And so what I finally started to do a few years ago was buy my own birthday cake. I would take it to my party. I would take it to the cabin with my friends and I would have the chef right on there. We love you so much, Shallon. You're so beautiful dangerously thin, like whatever, right? And I push past how pathetic it felt to be buying my own cake. I'm just a loser. I'm not a loser. I have plenty of friends, but what I am is persnickety. I have a specific way I need to be supported. And if I communicate that to other people and they can't do it or they won't do it or they fuck it up, I am okay with doing it myself. Where am I going with this? What is your emotional birthday cake? Do your friends know what supportive means? Oh, they do. Supportive and emotional stuff like that. It's like love languages. You know, we talk about love languages and we talked about this recently on how to make a guy more thoughtful. And the first thing is tell him what you value. Men typically value physical touch. They do. They're just, they're animals. That's how they relate to women. It's like, oh, honk, honk. That's just how they are, right? Just the shocker. But women, like, we're all kind of different. Mine is acts of service and compliments, like words of affirmation. Like I'm, you know, and you guys are all different. So when it comes to supportiveness, when I think about it, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, it's it's very similar. Like, I don't want someone to come over and like rub my feet. If they're like, hey, I'm going to pick up your dog from daycare. I know you are having a bitch of a week. I got you, girl. Oh, that warms my reptilian little heart even thinking about it. I want someone who's sending me it. Good morning, babe. I love you. You got this girl. We're all here behind you. Thank you. That means a lot to me. I don't need gifts. You know, I don't need these other things. That's what I need. But since everyone has a different love language and therefore a different support language, a different birthday cake, we have to communicate that. One of my best friends, Lizzie. Hi, Lizzie, if you're watching. I remember I was visiting her in New Orleans Gosh, oh my God, it was like 10 years ago, so long ago. And I was there over the 4th of July and my father died on the 4th of July. And it was a real, it, some, some years it's really awful and some years I don't even think about it, you know? This was a really awful year because I was dating an absolute bag of shit, Jason Clark. I don't mind sharing his full name, he can go fuck himself. <laughs> Maybe don't cheat on a girl who has a YouTube channel. Um, He was just picking fights with me and he knew it was my dad's death anniversary and I was just like, he, cause that's just how he was. He was awful. And I was so upset. And she looked at me and she's like, what do you need? What do you need? And I'm like, this is exactly the right thing to say. This is exactly the right thing to say. Right. And cause it's not like, what do you need? I mean, she was, she's like, do you want to go get a massage? Do you want to be alone? Do you want to talk? Do you want to play with the dogs? Do you want to talk about it? Do you want to not talk about it? I can offer you distraction. And she's like, I'm going to give you 10 minutes to think about it. I'll come back. Just lay down on the bed, right? And I was like, I need to be distracted. She's like, let's go to the pool. Let's go get some Sazeracs. Let's go do something, right? But she was trying to get that knowledge. Now I know what you're saying. Well, good for you. You have a very supportive, emotionally intelligent friend. <laughs> a lot of people want to help, but they don't know how, or they're helping in the way that's their birthday cake. 
that their love language is. Well, mine is gifts. So I brought her, you know, stuff to make mimosas. And you might be going, that doesn't solve any fucking problems for me. I don't want to get drunk. I'm not celebrating. I'm going through something, right? But you have to acknowledge, and we all do, that people do things from their own filter, their own filter of thoughtfulness. So if it's not your particular love language, your birthday cake, say to them, be like, you know what would be amazing for me? You don't need to drop stuff off. If you could just text me in the morning and in the evening, that would just be, that would make so much of a difference. They'd be like, Okay, got it. So before you come down really hard on your friends, make sure they know what your cake flavor is. Make sure they know what you need and how to support you. But let's say they do. And let's say they're not. What do you do? Ask yourself if maybe what you're going through is either redundancies or out of their realm of conceptualization or a trigger. Redundancies. If you're, you've broken up with your boyfriend again, how many times is this? How often do you talk about him? Are you tired of thinking about him? Then imagine where your friends are at, right? Do you notice that people are getting really exasperated with this particular topic, whether it's a guy, whether it's a job that you hate, but you won't leave and you're not cleaning up your resume and you're not really doing anything different. Is it your body? And then here you are at Dairy Queen, right? Are you a broken record? If you are, and look, we never want to acknowledge that maybe we have a hand in our own outcomes, but we do. We, we always do. And there's a power in realizing that because that means we have the ability to change it. And aren't we all here to change? We're not here to be victims. We're fucking not. Leave that to the weirdo Britney stands. Okay. It's not us. If there's, if there's redundancies, I mean, girl, you can't blame people for taking a step back. Ask them, be like, do I bring this up all the time? They're, and if, if the answer is yes, oh, they will let you know. Yes. Yes, Alexis. I have given you my, my advice and my opinion. I just, I don't even know what to say anymore. I don't even know what to say. That anger is going to be real close to the surface. And it's not anger, anger, it's concern. So don't get defensive. Be like, this is how much that person cares about me. That they're distancing themselves from me because they cannot watch this play out again and again. That's actually love. Okay? What was the second one we said? Oh, out of their realm of conception. You might just be barking up the wrong emotional tree. We need to be aware that not every single friend has the exact same emotional spectrum, depth, data, experiences, and relevant advice that all the other ones do nor do they have those exact same things that we might. They might have different ones. So like, maybe don't go to your party, party, party friend and talk about some really deep, real issues about your existential religious crisis. Maybe that's just not in her wheelhouse. Maybe what would be in her wheelhouse is social anxiety. I, I feel anxious walking into this party. Girl, I do too, right? We can't expect every single person to be every single thing. We have to have a targeted approach. It's like spices in a spice rack. They don't all do the same thing. They don't all taste the same. <sighs> and it's tough. But this is why we need a lot of friends. You know, if we only have one friend, and I understand making friends is tough. We have a whole playlist on how to make friends. I get that it's not easy, but we can tend to be overly reliant and therefore um, overly resentful if people don't measure up because we're expecting them to fill 100% of our emotional needs. But you can buy that cake yourself. You have to learn to get your own cake emotionally. What was the third thing? Triggers. I actually enjoy being triggered. <laughs> like when I, you know, I had a father who committed suicide. Um, I used to be a cutter. I've had eating disorders. Blah, blah, blah. So when I encounter people going through those things, I'm not repelled. I lean in. Like I like it because, not like I like it, but... It's because it's relatable to me. It makes me feel less alone. I know, hopefully, I can make them feel less alone in what can be a very isolating experience. So I like that. I reach, I reach closer to people going through things I've been through, but not everyone is that way. If they haven't processed something or if it's still fresh or whatever, their triggers are their trigger. And I hate that word. It's so like, well, let me triggers. I'll show you a trigger, bitch. It's Montana. It means a whole different thing out here. Anyway, like that just might be a psychological splinter that you are pressing on and they cannot deal with it. Don't keep pressing. Why? 
Worst case scenario, you're going to hurt them. And you don't need two people hurt, right? Even worst case scenario, they're going to plug in. They're going to be like, fine. you want, Yeah, no, let's talk about it. And they're going to give you some really bad advice. Or they're going to kind of like, well, like she got raped and I got raped, but she's going to the cops and I never had the guts to go to the cops. So I'm going to tell her that no one's going to believe her. People don't do this consciously, but it comes out unconsciously and subconsciously because they might not have processed things. So be cognizant of your audience, right? But at the end of the day, you have the right to say, my needs aren't being met. Your needs are valid, yes. But again, we always need to make sure that our needs are realistic. That Not that our needs are realistic, but like the likelihood of them being fulfilled is realistic. You know, I need a certain amount of caviar every day. I could, I could start every single day with caviar. Is it realistic? I don't know, probably not, right? So I modify that. We have to do this emotionally, as silly as it sounds and as unnatural as it feels. Like, no, my needs are what they are and people should pull up for me and give me what I need. Okay, but if we operate under that, I should have that, that entitlement, it becomes this bottomless pit. And there's never enough. I'm entitled to all this. Look at Brittany. Look at Brittany. She has people outside the courtroom. Hashtags. Smarty pants is like me making videos about her. It's not enough. Why doesn't she have Christina Aguilera? And why not Beyonce? How about Adele, who probably wasn't even born when I was incarcerated in this conservatorship? Where's Barack weighing in on this? How about that old Benjamin Netanyahu? Is he still alive? That's how entitlement goes. It's basically greed. And we all know greed is bottomless. That's why it's a sin. So if we can avoid tipping into that, which is part and parcel with a victimhood narrative, like those two walk hand in hand, our needs are gonna be easier to fill. Yeah, you could say this is moving the bar lower, but there is a freedom in that. You know what? I've got, I, I have got this. I'm in pain and I do need to see my friends and I need to feel supported, like I'm not in this alone, but at the end of the day, I'm gonna figure out how to deal with this con artist. I'm gonna figure out how to deal with this mean girl at work. I'm going to get through this breakup because in the dark of the night, it is just you, girl. This is not, unfortunately, a democracy. There's no board of directors when it comes to running our lives. Our friends can weigh in. They can be supportive. They can offer advice. At the end of the day, you have to be the one to take action and make decisions. Mm, I know. I know. It sucks. I know. Like, trust me. Right? I think Britney Spears is going to have a really tough awakening about that. She doesn't know how to handle money. She doesn't know how to handle her career. She certainly doesn't pick great guys. This dude's an obvious gold digger. Sam, whatever his name is. Hot, but a gold digger. So she's kind of been thrown into the deep end. She probably doesn't even know how to write a check. I mean, I guess you don't really need to in this day and age, but. So put those friends who aren't fulfilling your needs on some sort of back burner. Maybe your party friend is just your party friend, right? And maybe the writing on the wall is that this is a clue for you to... Go out and make more friends. And maybe prioritize different sets of skills instead of like the cool crowd. Oh, I want to be friends with the popular girls. But hey, when the rubber meets the road, the popular girls don't pull up for me. They're not here. They don't give a shit about my mental health or what I'm going through. But those nerd people on improv team, eh, who like, oh, like I don't want to go to the bars with because they're like so dorky. Oh, they're there for you when the going gets tough. Huh. So maybe your metric, your rubric for friendship is going to shift. That's okay. You're learning. This is all about data gathering, right? And it's painful to have to learn this on the fly, in the storm, when the going is tough. It's gotten tough and it's here, right? But hey, that's life. And at least you can turn that pain into growth because we can't change what happens. We can't change what other people are capable of, but we can change what the resultant feelings mean and how it enriches our life going forward. I wanna know your thoughts on Brittany and Christina and all that. Uh, we are going to be back with more videos. We're gonna do Adele, how to rebuild your life, a whole bunch of other ones. I'm gonna see you soon. I'll see you later, Shalligators. <laughs>